This is experiment three, density of saline solutions, graphing by hand. I've got the piece of graph paper that comes with the uh, lab uh, as one of the last pages, page nine in this version of it. And uh, as the lab says, and as you can count, it's got uh, 50 squares along the one axis and 50 squares along the other. I'm going to call this axis the y-axis on the uh, longer side of the paper, although the either way is fine. And the axis down here, <clears throat> excuse me, at the bottom, the x-axis. Now, I know that I've got 50 squares um, in each direction, and I've got my data here. The lab itself provides some simple guidelines for creating your axes, but I'm going to show you where those guidelines came from. On the x-axis, we're going to need to plot our density. And we want to include all of our data points. So our data points fall between 1.08 and uh, let's just do 1.083 minus 1.024. So these are the limits of our data. And so that's the grams per milliliter that we need to graph. And there are 50 squares. Okay. So this will give us the size that will allow us to exactly plot those 50 squares on our 50 boxes. Uh, so looking at this, I do 1.083 minus 1.024 equals 0 0.059. Divide that by 50 and I get 0 0.00118. And it's a slightly strange set of units, but we'll write them out. Uh, grams per milliliter per square. Now, this is not a nice round number. When you make a graph, it helps you to make the graph and it helps others to read the graph when each square is a nice round number. The closest one I'm going to do is 0 0.002. Of course, this number has to be bigger uh, than the number that we've got before, 0 0.002 grams per milliliter per square. And in addition to that, instead of going from 1.024 as my abs as my minimum on my x-axis, I'm going to go from 1.000. I'm going to go to uh, 1.100. These are what I'm suggesting as my beginning and end points for the x-axis. I'm going to divide that by my 50 squares. And the numerator is just 0 0.10. Oop. Divided by 50. And it is exactly my 0 0.002. grams per milliliter per square. So this is a nice further check that tells me that I can go from 1.000 to 1.100 um, as the limits on my x-axis. You could also go from 1.1, uh, sorry, 1.01 .01 to 1.09 and still include all of your data and still use 0.002 there are multiple choices uh, that work for this. I'm going to make a 0 0.002 gram per milliliter as a nice round number. Actually, I don't think there's very many choices for how big each square is. But there are starting and end points. There are multiple choices. And I'm going with 1.000 and 1.100. So what that looks like on my x-axis is right here will be 1.000. My units and my label on this will be density, density in grams per milliliter. 
Now I like to just note 1.002. Note the first box because that tells me how big each box is. Um, each box is 0 0.002. After that, you don't have to note all the boxes. In fact, you don't even have to note this. But then when you go one, two, three, four, five boxes, you get to 1.010. And I'm making the numbers sideways here so that they fit nicely. You could do the other way too. One, two, three, four, five, 1.020. 1.030 all the way across the page 1.060 1.07 all the way across to 1.100 then you're going to do the other axis in the same way. I will leave that up to you. There are suggested uh, boundaries uh, in the lab itself. There are multiple choices. The key thing is each square must be a nice round number. It can't be something that ends like, it can't be 0 0.02743. Uh, it could be 0 0.04 or 0 0.05. Uh, in this case, it'll be molarity per square.